and welcome to this month's edition in the lab for me, Becky. Uh, this month I'm going to show you how to create a magic wine bottle holder. So I was recently on holiday in Portugal and came across one of these in one of their gift shops. So what is it? So this is a wine bottle holder and it holds your bottle of wine like so. So how does this trickery work? So looking at the overall setup you can see that the bottle is able to float and self-balance in the air because the center of mass is directly over the base of the holder where we've got this angled cut allowing the whole thing to balance and so for all the physicists out there you'll probably make sense of these diagrams of how this is all working and I just thought that this was a pretty cool thing to make, so I had a go at making my own. Okay, so the original one uh, that I've based my inspiration from uh, has a 45 degree angled base and it also has a 45 degree hole for the neck of the wine bottle to slot into. Now the base, we can do that very easily, uh, just using a 90 degree cutter and just simply cutting the way down. Uh, the hole, however, will prove a little bit tricky because we can't uh, easily create angled cuts on our CNC. So I'm going to look at creating a basic hole uh, based on the oval shape that we've got here. And that should provide us with the parallel stance uh, for the wine bottle. Okay, so uh, the two that I've made, I've made a plain one, uh, which is this one here. So you can see we've got a straight oval cut there, we've got a 45 degree angle. Created another one also, uh, this is part of two-sided machining operation uh, where we have text on one side, uh, just simple v-carved text using a v-bit uh, and then we've got our v-bit cut for the 45 degree uh, base uh, and that simply works like this. Right then, so let's take a look at the build. Okay, so I used VCarve to create this file, but it can be opened in Aspire also. So I'm going to go and open an existing file, and in your project folder you'll have a file there called magicwinebottleholder.crv. Uh, and so here that will open up that file. You've got this um, little terms of use note to read through, so I'm just going to OK that for now. Uh, and this is a very simple design. So all it is, it consists of three vectors. We have a rectangle for the actual profile shape. We have this oval shape to cut the hole out that our neck of the bottle will slot into. And then we have a line here that runs along the bottom of the wine bottle holder where we'll simply run a profile pass with a v-bit tool to create the angle that we need. Now the angle that we need in order for this to work is a 45 degree angle so I'm going to look at using a 90 degree v-bit to run along that line there to create that angle for me and that's pretty much it. Um, to create a plain one, you just simply come over to your toolpaths and you can run through uh, the toolpaths that I've got here. So we've got profile for the V-bit, so in here, let's take a look. I'm cutting all the way through my material using a 90 degree, one and a half inch V-bit. Machining on the vector there, uh, and that's pretty much it. So if we preview uh, just that toolpath can see what that would look like. Okay, so uh, a very chunky cutout then that's going to create a 45 degree angle for us. We just tile the windows and you'll see I have a pocket toolpath here. So if we double click on that, that's using this oval vector here. Uh, we're just going to pocket it all out uh, just so we have no material left. Again, all the way through. This time I'm using um, just under a quarter inch end mill there. Uh, I'm going to cut this in an offset strategy. So it's going to start in the center and kind of work its way out to the bounds of the vector there. Uh, and then if we go ahead and preview that toolpath, you should see what that looks like. Okay, so that's cutting all the way through. And then we simply have a profile cutout, uh, cutting all the way through using an end mill or machining on the 
outside. I've put two tabs in place just to uh, hold that to my block of material. I've added ramps and a lead in and a lead out uh, to the toolpath also. Uh, and then if we just close out there and preview this one, we'll see how that looks. Okay, so that's perfect. So that is all it takes to create a plain wine bottle holder. Now if you wanted to add some decoration to the wine bottle holder, for example you may want to v-carve some text or a graphic onto the other side, uh, then I've set this file up so that you can do so. So you'll notice we are working in a two-sided job. Now if you go to your layers bar at the top here, I have a layer called Dowels for Alignment. And then this is all down to um, how I'm going to align my material in X and Y when I come to flip the part over. So see that I have two circles here. So these circles represent the diameter of the dowels that I have and that I intend to use to flip my material over and get everything aligned in X and Y on both the top and bottom sides. Now, now if you've not yet um, tried out two-sided machining then I suggest that you watch some of the two-sided tutorials that are available and in many of those videos we discuss this um, dowel method uh, for creating your alignment in X and Y when you flip the material over. So I'll give you a link to those videos in the description also. Right then, so um, so we've got the dowel, so you'll notice I have a toolpath here called Profile Dowel. So if we just preview that, all we're doing here is just cutting partially into my material uh, at point 0.6 here, uh, and the same for up here also. And so at this stage, what I do is I check that my dowels fit into those holes uh, before I take the material off of the spoil board. Right then, so with that, that's the top side complete and then you're ready to start the bottom side. So for the bottom side, uh, if we just close out here, I've got our part so that our Z0 is set to the machine bed. Okay, and the reason for that is just that I want to reference, always reference from the same face, whereby on the top side it was on the top, and so on the bottom side we're referencing that from the bottom, which is essentially the top of the top side. And again, all of this is covered in many of the two-sided tutorials. Right then, so um, with that, you'd simply um, take your dowels, these vectors here, and you'd run a profile toolpath, pretty much the same as before. Uh, this time we're cutting down 0.8, but we're going to have a start depth of 0.7. So that 0.71 is basically my material thickness. That isn't there because we're machining directly into the spoil board here. Um, and if we just switch that on, we can kind of make sense of that. So it would drop down to the full thickness of our material, which isn't going to be on the spoil board. We're only machining the dowel holes into the spoil board, so that then we can basically line the two sides up when we come to flip our part over and hopefully you'll be able to see this uh, shortly when we come to machine the part. Right then, so with that, that means everything would be aligned. So here we can then take a look at some of the other layers that I've created for you. So I've created a layer here called Wine Text. Okay, so it's just some text where I just wrote in wine. And for something like this, we could just simply look at v-carving that. Uh, so here we're just going to look at v-carving the text using um, a 90 degree uh, one and a half inch tool, okay, or one and a quarter, uh, and so we could just simply OK that with those settings, calculate that, preview it, and that's how our part would look. Okay, we'll just undo that. Uh, another design I've put in here for you is this grape design. So this actually comes from um, a file that was created um, for the user group meeting that we held I think back in 2015 uh, and this is a vector file that is available for you to use uh, from the support website but I've included it uh, within this file and again you can just take those vectors uh, and we could look at applying a v-carve toolpath again using the same tool calculate that to see how that looks. We could preview it. Uh, we could also maybe give that a toolpath colour just to see how it would look if we was to colour that in. Uh, and that's the part there. 
Okay, so you've got uh, two extra designs, the wine text, the grape design, um, or you could just settle for the plain design. Right, and so with that, we'd save out those toolpaths and then head over to the lab. So let's take a look at the machine inside of things. Okay, so I've sanded both of the wine bottle holders um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at filling the V-carb uh, with some black enamel uh, just to really bring that text out. Uh, once it's dry we'll just sand off the excess uh, and then we'll go over uh, both of the holders uh, as a finish with some uh, beeswax furniture polish. Here we have our finished wine bottle holders. So now just want to check that everything works. Pop that in there, get your bottle of wine, and there we have it. So if you want to have a go at creating your own wine bottle holder, then simply head over to your BNCO account where you can download the project files from there. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, then hit the subscribe button for instant updates on the latest videos that we'll be releasing. So thank you for watching and happy making.